Welcome everyone. Uh, so we are going to present a uh, uh, new React support in jhipster, which is not released yet. It's kind of in an alpha beta stage. We are hoping to release it probably today. So let's see. Hello everybody. I'm Sandal. Um, I'm jhipster and JX lead. I'm currently doing the part with Angular as well as with React. And I'm a product developer at Zabia Labs. And you can find me on open source projects like jhipster, webpack, servo, and many more. And currently I'm hacking to WebAssembly. If anybody of you are interested in it, just ping me in Twitter, yeah. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Deepu. I'm the co-lead of jhipster. I'm all, I also work for a company called Zebia Labs. We uh, make uh, DevOps products. Uh, I'm also a robotics and astronomy enthusiast. You can find me in Twitter. Uh, we are uh, co-authoring a book on jhipster. It's available from Pact. Uh, you can find the link here if you're interested. So how many of you guys using React already in this room? Okay. Well, we have five. Okay. How many of you using Angular? One, two, four, five. Okay. How many of you wanted to change to React? your Angular application. So we have three, four, five. And how many of you using jhipster already? Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. And how many of you loving TypeScript? Wow, we got a good amount there, yeah. yes. And I assume you all are Java developers as well. No, the, most of the Java developers the ones love loving TypeScript. TypeScript are Java developers okay. as well. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, so for those of you know, uh, don't know about jhipster, uh, it's a development platform uh, with an application generator at its core. Uh, currently, uh, it supports uh, developing uh, Spring Boot and Angular applications as well as microservices. Uh, we are adding React support. We are uh, working on it. <laughs> we have been frantically trying to release it today, but uh, yeah, you know how open source goes. So probably we'll have at least a beta or an alpha by today, or at least tomorrow, or day after tomorrow, or next month. <laughs> so uh, for a Java project, uh, we seem to be quite popular. So you can find more info at the website listed below. So this is what we are going to do in the session. We are going to generate an application and then run the application and then showcase the code. And finally, we go through the app that has been generated with jhipster. So it's code time. Can we move to terminal? Yeah. So we are in a directory now. We are just going to create a jhipster project in this directory. Okay, we are creating a directory. So just type jhipster to create a jhipster project. So it will ask you a set of questions and we just have to go through these questions and then select something based on that. Okay, so just, just a minute. Okay. So we have the first question is, it asks what kind of project that you want to use. It's monolithic or a microservice or microservice gateway based application or a UAA server. We have an option for that. And we have chosen my monolithic here. And the next two questions are simpler. You just give a base name for your application and then you select a package name. And uh, we do have a jhipster registry, which helps you to monitor and register your services and then scale them. This is mainly used for microservices. And of course you can use it for monolith to track or no, to monitor the application, all those things. And we have three kinds of authentications used. One is the JWT authentication, which has been selected. This is a default version. And we do have other authentications like OAuth2 and uh, the other stateless authentication is also present there. And then now we are going to select what type of database that you have to select. So we have an option between SQL and NoSQL databases and in NoSQL databases, we are currently supporting MongoDB and Cassandra. I think Couchbase is on the list soon. We are, we are waiting to be merged. So we'll select an SQL database here. And uh, when you select SQL database, you when you develop an application, you have two things here. One is a production level database and development level database. We will choose MySQL in the production level and H2-based for a development level here. And you have a second level cache. So we can choose EH cache here, which is a default version that we have. We do have support for Hasselcat and InfiniSpan. And one cool thing about this is uh, the original people from the projects come here 
and deliver the stuff. So for example, in Finispan, we have someone from Red Hat contributing to our source. So things like that happening. And we do have an option between choosing Maven as well as Gradle. So we'll choose Maven here. And uh, we have some other stuffs extra added to here. Like you can use social login, you can use Elasticsearch and things like that. There are extra modules that are available inside our generator. And if you wanted to use, you can use this. We just go ahead for this demo purpose. Uh, for the React, uh, some of these options are not yet uh, completed because we are still working on it. That's why we are going with the default options. So we are not going to go into details of the other options because the uh, uh, because this is about React. So we'll directly go into uh, choosing React and then yeah, uh, no SAS for now, uh, no I18N. I mean, yeah, we can choose I18N actually. So that part was coded in recently. So let's say um, Dutch, where is Dutch, where is Dutch? Yeah, I so we Dutch. have currently these many languages, <laughs> we are supporting it. And added to JUnit and Kamatest unit test framework, which will be automatically generated for you. We also have an option to choose between three other testing frameworks. We have Gatling, which is in Scala and Cucumber, which is in Gherkin. And also we have protractor based testing. So if you want, you can go ahead and choose it. But, but not, for just, not for React. We are not to for implement now. Not that for, for React. Yes. Not for now. Soon. So uh, I think we can skip this uh, about markets, please. So what happens now is it just creates an application for you. Uh, we will go through the <coughs> code that has been generated now. It creates an application for you, and then it installs everything, all the known modules, npm packages, whatever you want to have. It installs everything. And after that, it creates a git init for you. It just initializes git in your repository and then it's done. So it will stop there. Then we have to just boot up your application and see how beautiful the application is. Or not. <laughs> so this is a folder that has been created. It's a normal Spring Boot based project structure. So you have a, a main folder here. Uh, which has your Java and uh, so resources, which mostly deals with your Spring part of your system. And then you have a React-based application inside the web app folder. Deepu, can you go inside there? You can. Yeah. He was supposed to present it from his fancy new Mac, but he forgot his fancy new adapter. <laughs> <laughs> so here uh, we have everything inside this app folder. So if you go inside here, we have a config folder. And then the modules, which actually encompasses the list of modules or list of segments that we have in your applications, in our application. So you have an account module, which deals with your personal account information, administration module, which deals with metrics, which deals with databases, which deals with API endpoints and all those stuffs which you require. And you have a login model, which basically tells that it's going for login. And you have reducers here. So this React application is made up of, it has Redux inside it. So you do have reduces and actions here. So these are the things that is there. And all the common stuffs are inside this shared module. So, so this yeah. is how the application is. By the way, did you get this? This J hipster React. <laughs> but it has an Angular thing here. Yeah, but we don't do have an Angular. <laughs> it's, a, it's an old log logo. I mean, it's a, it's a tattoo. You cannot remove tattoos. So, so probably we, uh, we just go to the terminal now. Yes. So the application has been generated and That's since we have used, you just go ahead and put maven command to start your application. Shall we? Yeah. So and you can see the git has been initialized and we have initial set of comments present there. The application is initializing now. Yeah. Uh, so you can see the yarn uh, build was already completed during the initialization, I mean, uh, during application generation. You can see that after generation, all your uh, yarn dependencies, were, I mean, uh, npm dependencies were installed. We use yarn by default because it is faster. And uh, the build was also triggered. So the front end has already been built. So we are just starting up the server. It has been started. So the server is started here. So this is by default the simple application that has been generated with jhipster. And this has bootstrap 4 in it. Ouch. Huh? Yeah, just, yes. just here. I mean, <laughs> it's a different guy, not the same guy. Yeah, because Hopefully. it's a new tattoo or laser treatment, whatever. So this is application that has been generated. We have JWT based authentication and we have a database also created the backend. So we'll just go through whatever is there. So you have an admin module here. 
which has user management and by default you have a list of users that has been generated in the system so it lists there and you have a basic cred operation for the all the users over there and you have metrics which actually takes all the JVM metrics and show it in a nicer UI so you have JVM metrics the request all your server statistics everything is present here you can go ahead and look at it and it also gives an endpoint for health check. So it's it, it basically works on top of Spring Actuators. So you have this endpoint metrics, health metrics, everything is there. So you can go and see all your health, database health, and the disk space in which the server is running, all those stuff, so you can go ahead and see. And the configuration, so again, Spring Actuator stuff. You have API uh, documentation, this is based on Swagger. So this lists all the APIs that are available in the system. This is very useful in terms of microservice application. Of course, it is useful in monolithic too. So it gives all the details about the APIs that the application has. And you can play with that API over here. So all those things you can do. I think we don't have much time, so yeah. we can go through quickly, I guess. And you have list of account settings there. So that is pretty much of it. And you can change the language and show them. So, so yep. Yeah, uh we wrote our own uh, i18 and plugin for this because we couldn't find something that already works with the i18 files we have for angular because somehow all the react i18 plugins seems to do their own stuff so we had to write our own i18 plugin which is not bad so we have now have one more react i18 plugin it's nice <laughs> so you also have password logout and all those stuff here so let's uh, see what we have on chanda next uh, oops So these are the few things that are upcoming. We are trying to PWA FI our application. So works has been going on for Angular Matt now. Matt already added uh, support for PWA yesterday night, yes. midnight, three o'clock in the morning, something like that. Yeah. So there is already a basic PWA support already there. And there is a PR that is currently open for Angular 5. Uh, yeah. We will be doing Angular 5 very soon. Yeah. We are waiting for some of the libraries to migrate to Angular 5, then we'll be going to Angular 5 again. We also have Spring Boot on the pipeline, Spring Boot 2 on the pipeline along with Spring 5. The work has been started, it's been going on. We also have uh, 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 work going on for some basic templating or blueprint support where you can override the individual parts of jhipster with your own templates and stuff. So you can extend jhipster easily to fit your needs if because we won't be able to satisfy everyone's needs. We also are uh, planning to modularize our uh, 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 you know, entity generator and stuff so that it is more reusable for others. I uh, you know module developers and like uh, blueprint developers and stuff like that. So if you guys have any questions, you can ask me. We are here. So you can approach us outside also if you want to have any questions. And any questions now? And if you want to uh, see uh, a smackdown between Angular and React, we have a talk. Uh, Matt and myself have a talk t today afternoon. So please come. You can ha have some nice battle out between React fans. I, I hope there are enough React fans to support me here. I, think I, no. I, I, I kind of feel singled out because there are a lot of Angular people. <laughs> no, even the board outside says, yeah, please. Uh, currently, we have uh, Tom, uh, we used to uh, have Tomcat, then we switched to Undertow. So probably we'll stick to that. Uh, unless there is a huge issue or like, you know, there is a huge performance benefit from another option like yeah. Jetty or something. But I don't see that happening anytime soon, but because Undertow seems to be the lightest and like it's fast. It's faster, yeah. So probably not. Uh, we have some uh, J-Hipster t-shirts if you want to grab. So there are some, yeah, there are a few if you want. A few stickers too, if you're interested. And start contributing to the open source that you're doing and start hacking. Thank you. Thanks, guys.